the NFL needs to do something. That's the, I think, well, I don't know the NHL enough to speak on it, but for basketball, baseball, football, the NFL needs to like, I don't know what they need to do. They need to clean up the act. They need to make the game something, it, you know, like football is better on TV than live. Like, yeah, like the whole thing is designed to be a TV spectacle, right? And, and if you're playing defense, for, for a few years now, you couldn't touch a quarterback. Now the defensive backs are like, well, what's pass interference? Like, what do I do? I got to let him catch. I can't touch him. But then when he catches the ball, I still can't hit him because he's defenseless. Imagine telling Ronnie Lott that he couldn't hit a defenseless receiver. Ronnie Lott used to let him catch the ball just so he, right? right? He fuck just him. so he could kill him. He was like, yeah, you'll catch one. And then for the rest of the day, you're just hearing my footsteps, right? Remember that we used to talk about that footsteps, and yeah, we we got we know about the concussions Lester now. Lester the molester, and this and that, yeah. Lester the molester, <laughs> Lester the molester used to get in your ass. He used to spray stick them all over. Yeah, remember that? And they he had that low stance off the line and shit. And so, he, oh my god, I don't know what they're gonna do with football. I know they're trying to make it an offensive game. Um, I had given up on football for a while. Now I'm starting to watch it again, but it's I don't have a team. I don't, I don't have a team. Neither do I. I mean, I like watching the, uh, you know, because it's perfect football. I like watching New England because it's perfect football. I grew up watching Belichick and Lawrence Taylor, so New England's an extension of that. You know, yeah. it's like watching Danny and Asano teach kung fu. He's teaching Bruce Lee kung fu, but. I think about the NFL in the next 20 years, how hard it's going to be. Shit's going to change because of football, because not everybody's putting their kid in football no more. Kid Parents aren't letting their kids play football. Even in my hometown, they, which was built on football. Yeah. No, nah, 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 listen, I know a lot of mothers who are like, no, my kid ain't playing football. Plain and simple. Like, my kid is not going to get hit. You know, they, they got to do it, – it's a line. It is a violent game. But they got to figure out how to keep the game exciting, but still protect the players. You know, uh, protect their heads. Right. I, the best thing I heard, but it's crazy as it sounds. The best idea I heard, it was a doctor, a neurologist. He said, "Go back to leather helmets." He said, "Because if you're wearing a leather helmet, you won't use your head for a weapon." <laughs> Which, you know, made sense, right? Because make a lot of sense. Because part of the reason they, they started using the the helmet is because the helmet is so strong. Right? So I don't know. They they got to uh they gotta do something with the game because right now it's so heavily weighed on the offense that the defense I think they're like, Well, what do we what do we do? Right? What do we do? We can't hit the quarterback, we can't hit the receivers. What do we do? But but part of the game, and and I'm not saying taking people out like like you know we're not talking 1978 Raiders, <laughs> you know. But the game is somewhere between that and and where we're headed now. It won't go away. You know why football won't go away? Because it's the number one. You talked about gambling. It's the number one gambling sport in the country, right? More money's bet on the Super Bowl than any event we have. So it's not going to go away because that money ain't going nowhere. What's going to happen is, though, it's going to change the college uh, more uh, African-American, Latino kids, people. I, I, I watched the report, I think, on Real Sports is what's going on right now. That They're the ones that are picking up the slack. A couple of Jews in. You know, if you got no money to go to college, this is your answer to go to college. Yeah, it's a way in. So... They don't give a fuck. They're like, this is your way in. We'll figure it out. I sit here at times and think that this just come from the fucking sky. All these concussions and all this PTSD. I want to know that about those guys that were playing with leather helmets. What was their percentage? See, I, you know, I started watching football in the 70s with Pittsburgh Steelers. That that was the team you watched. If you were a violent person, yeah. you were fucking crazy. And <laughs> yeah, the and fearsome shit. foursome yeah, and all was, that. Yeah, I loved that shit. I loved the Raiders. Mm -hmm. I loved hitting. And that's, you know, you're Cuban. There's no baseball. You're angry. 
You might as well get see somebody to get fucking hit from behind, you know. We all saw Lawrence Taylor break what's his name's leg. Yeah. Oh, shit. I forget my point. Anyway. Uh, no, the hits used to be part of football, and it used to be the highlights. What happened right? to those guys? I know that the, well, the longtime center from the Pittsburgh Steelers Webster. shot himself. Webster blew his head off. Blew his head off. And Junior those, Seau killed yeah. himself. That was a big deal. That was a big deal. But but this is the thing, and it, this is the different time we're living in. So those players from the seventies, you know why we don't know what happened to? Because we didn't have social media, we didn't have twenty four seven access. So like once you retired from football, if you weren't an announcer, you just went away, right? So we have no idea what I know. A lot of those guys did die young. A lot of football players died in their forties and fifties, and they said because of the collisions like they said if you're a lineman right offensive defensive lineman it's like being in a car crash because they just bang into each other's bodies and their internal organs would get messed up and but but again nobody cared because nobody knew right so we're only finding this out now because we have we have the information now we know what happens to a player 10 years 15 years after his career but I'm sure if you went back and looked, I bet a lot of those players from the 70s, you know, were, were whacked out in the 80s. And Even so. like boxers, like I watched, you know, a couple of weeks ago, there was an interesting fight, Mazdaval against Diaz. And it got stopped because of a cut that uh, people argued they thought would last. And two days later, I was online and I saw Roberto Duran versus Davey Moore. And I clicked on the fight. I, I, it's one of my all-time favorite fights. I haven't watched it in about four years. Roberto Duran is a 32-year-old on his way out fighting a 26-year-old beast who's 16 and 0. And Roberto Duran unleashes a beating on this man that it, it, it's just horrifying. It's horrifying to watch as a spectator. Ooh. Even if you like boxing. Yeah. There's a couple times where the announcers are going, stop this stop fucking this fight. fight. This poor guy is knocked out standing up. Roberto was not hitting him, knocking him out, and hitting him and waking him up. And and I said, look how different boxing was in the 70s. Look at the garden. If what? you would have stopped that fight in the garden that night, they would have killed you. Yeah. They would have thrown chairs because I remember at the garden, they used to throw chairs. They used to love to throw those fucking chairs. And you look at the 30, 40 year difference, how they stopped it over a cut under the eye. Now I wasn't there. It looked like a serious cut. It was a cut that had been opened from previously from the fight before, blah, blah, blah. But still, it was like, we didn't give a fuck in the 70s. No. Well, that's, I mean, but that's good for the athletes, right? Because. They, they did. They were warriors. And the other thing about boxing back then, 15 rounds, right? That's a long fight. Think about that. 15-round fight, that last three rounds, like, you know how beat up they were by then? You know what I mean? It, it's every sport's different now. Every sport's different now. But, but the physical, the violent sport, even hockey, right, they didn't wear helmets, Imagine getting hit with a hockey puck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's only recently hockey had helmets, right? And then they called them pussies for wearing helmets. You would get checked. What? Nah, I never played. I never played that. So, all, but. I tried that street hockey shit. <laughs> I went to Tom McCann. I bought my little NHL sneakers and shit. Remember Tom McCann used to have Hell the NHL yeah. sneakers? Yeah. <laughs> so you would have to have the NHL sneakers. I bought my little NHL sneakers. I went over that dog. They slammed me against a Cadillac. That was it. Oh, my God. That was it. And then I saw some kids' head go through a glass one day. Well, this ain't hockey. And these kids were serious, like block against block. Look up a guy, Ryan Reeves. It's my boy. He plays for uh, he plays for Vegas. He plays for the Golden Knights. Look up his highlights, greatest hits. That's He's that guy. He's You know, in hockey, they got that guy who's just there. Yeah, they're the enforcer, right? Yep. That's what they call them? Re Revo. This guy knocks the shit out of people. <laughs> you know, like that. That's basically his job, you know. But uh, yeah, I never played. But man, they and because they're coming at you fast, fast. like on ice, they got speed. And they fight on ice skates. Yeah, 
I can't even fucking walk. <laughs> and they're throwing. And they're throwing. And it's just part of the game. That's the crazy part. It's just part of the game. Yeah, that they're, they're badasses. That that's a that's a you know it's a tough way to make a living. You know, even I I, I remember being a kid and once a week there was a nice little misunderstanding in the MCA. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you've shown videos on here of them getting punched in the face. Oh, a nice little understanding. When the ABA, I think, I think it started like the ABA was just wild. The ABA was just wild. They had this guy Marvin Baden who's Bond, I'm yeah, Detroit. You know, I don't know how many times he took a pistol out <laughs> at a ref. No, he took a pistol out the garden. They called the foul on him one time. They threw him out of the game. He goes, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I got to go to the locker room. room. Willis Reed beat up everybody at the yeah. time. <laughs> like, what tribe is Willis Reed from? Yeah. That body. That's like that's like him, the Charles Barkley's cousin. Like yeah. Willis Reed could be Charles Barkley's cousin. He could be Daryl Dawkins' cousin. Remember when Willis Reed played like he couldn't walk? My God. He couldn't walk, but he played I game went to his back basketball back. camp. I loved Willis yeah. Reed. I loved Willis Reed. I loved him. I went yeah. to his basketball camp. I talked to him like maybe two times. Like, how you doing, kid? He <laughs> drilled us. We were there for a week and shit. <laughs> 